Hello, welcome to our worship this weekend. I'm Pastor David Schub. This is Pastor Christy Schub. We're glad that you're joining us online for this worship service. One thing um, I do want to highlight for people who may be interested in it, our vacation Bible experience is coming up on the 14th through the The 18th. 18th. So uh, if you're interested, please get signed up. Uh, We've had a pretty low sign up. So there's some questions about whether it's going to happen this year. So if you're interested, please be sure you sign up ASAP. With that, let us begin our worship for the weekend. We have three thoughts for the day. The first from Franklin Roosevelt. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. From Mohandas Gandhi, the difference between what we do and what we are capable of doing would suffice to solve most of the world's problems. And finally, from Josh Rybeck, every time I put God in a box, I end up cleaning off the pieces of shredded cardboard. Our call to worship. We are pilgrims on a journey. Some of us have traveled familiar roads throughout our lives. We are pilgrims on a journey. Some of us are ready to deviate from the safety of the well-marked highways and byways. We are pilgrims on a journey. Help us to move forward from wherever we are, to leave the comfort of familiarity in order to travel to the lands where you are calling us to go. We are pilgrims on a journey. Help us follow where you lead. Our confession is a confession prayer. I ask you to pray along with me. God of grace, Grace, we we confess confess that that we sometimes do not believe in our hearts what we proclaim with our lips. We hear your word and continue to live unchanged. We know of your liberating grace, yet remain bound by our limitations. We would rather rely on our own abilities, our works, and our intellect then rely rely on faith in you. Help us approach each moment as an intentional expression of our faith by putting the new wine you offer in new lives ready for new possibilities. In Jesus' name, amen. The God who created us is always making us new so that we might hold the new wine of Jesus' spirit. By By God's God's grace, we we are made new as faithful people. Alleluia.
My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fix your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you were great things in me, and your mercy will last from the depth of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to Our gospel reading today comes from the 19th chapter of St. Matthew. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is the new wine poured into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The Gospel of our Lord. It's summer. Woohoo! May the peace of God be with you in these months of renewal. May God guide you in renewing your energy, your spirit, and heart. May God make us new as we move into a new world beyond the COVID 19 pandemic. Amen. Well, when we were putting together our themes for this summer, we decided that, you know, everybody's facing all kinds of changes that are coming out of the movement back toward a different kind of life after COVID-19. People will be on the road. So maybe it would be good to focus on the parables, because the parables are a gift that breaks us out of our old way of thinking and moves us into thinking and being in new kinds of ways. So it's perfect, perfect to begin with this parable of new wine and new wineskins because it speaks in a powerful way about this newness that Jesus comes to bring. First, let me kind of give you a clear picture of what this image is all about because I'm not sure all of us really have a clear picture of it. In those days when Jesus was in the world, the wine was stored in animal skins. Since new wine gave off gases and expanded, it was placed in new wineskins because they're supple, soft, elastic, capable of expanding under the pressure. Jesus said it would never be advisable to put the new wine into old wineskins because if you filled up those old wineskins with the new wine, the, the dry, brittle, non-elastic sort of nature of the old wineskins would cause it to burst, would cause it to break in the face of the expansion and the pressure that comes with new wine. So do you get it? If we're to receive the new wine, and when I hear new wine, I think of the new wine of Jesus' vision for the world. We have to be made new in Christ. Our old lives can't hold, can't expand, can't face this new reality that Jesus brings into being. We have to give up the old ways of being and thinking so that we can receive the new. I read an editorial in the May 29th West Bend News that disturbed me. 
It took, I have to admit, it took a position that I didn't agree with, but that's not really what disturbed me. What disturbed me was the logic that the writers seemed to follow in the article. The editorial argued that Joe Biden is just like Jimmy Carter was, and Jimmy Carter was a failure, so Joe Biden will be a failure. Okay, you know, we can agree or disagree on that. But here's the logic the writer used. The writer said, Jimmy Carter ran on a platform of ethical government and world peace. Jimmy Carter had a vision that he could renew voters' trust in government and win over enemies by being nice. He was a religious and moral pragmatist who felt theories, and I would call it more of a moral vision than theories, could fix U.S. politics and foreign policy. The writer admitted that these visions of how life should be arose from Carter's Christianity, his belief in what Jesus Christ calls us to. And then he went on to argue that Carter was a miserable failure because he focused on how policy should be and not how it was. Now, to me, it seemed that by the end of the article, the person was saying, Carter did what was moral, was Christian, was a vision based on hope, but that doesn't work in our world. That that can't have any place here. We can't be moral and kind and conscienced if we're going to make things work in the world we're living in. Now, Luke's version of this parable about new wine in old wineskins adds an extra line. It says at the end of that particular version, and no one after drinking old wine desires new wine, but says the old is good. Isn't that what we saw in this? The old wine is good. It works. There's a deep and abiding belief out there that though Jesus might have had some really nice ideas about how life should be, they can't work in the real world. Anyone who tries to shape their life to be a vehicle for such a vision is a fool. Let's just stick with the same old wine is the argument and the same old skins because, well, the old wine is best. But I have to say that I'm willing to take a risk on this new wine, on this new vision Jesus has. I'm willing to allow Jesus to make me a new vessel to hold the new vision of the kingdom. And I have two primary reasons I thought of, at least this week, as I was working on things. First of all, I trust Jesus. Jesus has never failed in his love and concern for us, for all of the world. Jesus has made a place for me in the kingdom as old and broken and stretched out as I am, and makes me new in God's spirit. So why would I not let Jesus fill me with new wine? Why not take a chance on the new? My second reason is that it's insane to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect something new to happen. One writer points to this truth and the thinness of the old wineskins by writing this. I think about the fighting that's taking place in various parts of the world, whether it's by the name of ethnic cleansing or civil war makes no difference. People are still needlessly dying because the political powers that be are seeking to strengthen their control. What can possibly possess all these people to do the things they're doing? Can't they see the destructive nature of their actions? I think about the racial and economic barriers that divide communities and neighborhoods. I see people who are trapped in poverty or in run-down housing projects or in jobs that pay less than a living wage. I think of people who have tried to improve their quality of life but found the doors closed because they were of the wrong ethnic background. The list is endless. Just pick up your morning newspaper or turn on a television newscast. The discouraging part of all this is that it's not new. The methods of destroying life may have changed from spears to handguns, but the sin and evil in the hearts of those doing it have been the same since the beginning of time when Cain killed his brother Abel out of jealousy. Is there any hope for something new? The gospel proclaims the answer to be a resounding yes. 
The power of God is like new wine and fresh wineskins, even when the old appears to be entrenched in the fabric of humanity. What an incredible sort of synopsis of what we're looking at in the world. Now I want to go back to Jimmy Carter for a minute. Think about the Jimmy. Um, no matter what you thought of his presidency, he now builds houses, working for He's still working for peace in the world, uh, changing the world one little sip of new wine at a time. He still allows his life to be shaped by these new understandings that Jesus brought into the world. And I have to say, I like the new wine. I look at people like him and I say, give me a sip. I want to be like that too. And yet at the same time, I'm like all people, I think struggling to hang on to my old way of life. I like having things the way they are, and I'm not sure what a new life is actually going to look like. But I also know I can't. I can't pour the new wine of what Jesus says, the new vision of how things can be, the new life that Jesus offers into the old structures of my life. I can't do that. I have to let Jesus make me new. Let's think about Jesus just for a couple minutes this morning. Jesus broke every convention of his time, broke every rule in the book. Jews held many prescriptions associated with the Sabbath, but Jesus often broke the law. On one Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples walked through standing grain and ate the grain heads in violation of the laws of the Sabbath. On another occasion, Jesus cured a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath. He asked those watching, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save life or to destroy it? To those who questioned his motives and actions, Jesus responded by providing an important nuance to the law. The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And we could extend that to things like rules and structures and institutions. Besides violations of Sabbath practice, Jesus broke with the tradition by associating with the ritually impure, suggesting that compassion was more important than law and convention. When Jesus encountered lepers, he cured them despite the stigma associated with that skin disease. When the women, woman with the hemorrhage touched Jesus' clothes, she instantly was made well. In the, parable of the, the famous parable of the Good Samaritan, one reason given by the scholars for the failure of the priest and the Levite to stop for this poor guy who got beat up on the way, is that it would make them unclean to touch his blood. And if he was dead, they would really have problems in going to the temple. And so they walked on by. Purification was more pro- important. The Samaritan, however, ignored such conventions and reached out with compassion. Tradition took a backseat to meeting the immediate need. So here's the question. Are we ready for the new wine Jesus has to offer? I try to be, and yet I'm not always ready. And even when I try to share the new wine, well, things don't always work out as I have them planned. But I know that I can't be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, with Jesus' vision for the world, without having life changed. No matter how slowly it seems to happen, no matter how haltingly I seem to enter into the new life, new living must follow the new life Jesus fills us with. Tom Sine, in one of his books, put a powerful question to all of us that I want you to think about. He wrote, we believe you want the best God has for you and your loved ones. And he's talking about him and the other author of the book. The tragedy is that too many of us settle for less, much less, and we miss God's best. We have little sense of how to find a direction and a rhythm for our lives that flows directly out of our faith. When we fail to find a compelling sense of direction from our faith, we unwittingly allow others to define both the purpose and the pace of our lives. 
Many of us wind up exhausted and unfulfilled. The question we fail to ask is, why does our faith seem to have so little influence in defining both the direction and tempo of our lives? Listen to that again. Why does our faith, the new wine, seem to have so little influence in defining both the direction and tempo of our lives, why doesn't it create new wineskins? Can we receive the new wine of Christ and at the same time ignore the power of racism in our midst? Can we receive the new wine of Christ and not pursue new ways of including those who live on the margins of society? Can we receive the new wine of Christ and continue to leave unchallenged the value of our nation above the rest of the world and ourself above others? I think it's time for new wine. And that means we better get our new wineskins ready. Maybe others like it, but truth be told, I'm not sure I want the old wine anymore. How about you? Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving Lord, you offer us new wine. Help us to have lives that are new, wineskins that are new, so that we might hold the new life you offer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We as the church need to become so much more than a place to store our old traditions. Lord, help us be filled with the new wine of compassion and care and help. And help us in truth to go out and share your love and promise with all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help us here at Trinity as we approach 100 years as a congregation to reimagine what the next 100 years can be like. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Help us as people to find new ways to deal with those who are refugees. As people continue to come to our borders, we need to find new solutions. We especially need to show our love to children hoping for a new day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us to continue to find new ways to help those who are struggling with the effects and after effects of the COVID-19 virus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us, loving Lord, to continue to find new ways to talk about and struggle with issues of race. Last week, we remembered the anniversary of the death of George Floyd. This week, help us to move forward in working for equity for all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help us to receive the new wine of peace. Help Israel and Palestine continue to seek new ways of living with one another. Help both sides to hear the other with respect and to work for a solution that brings life to all people. It's time for us all to give up the old hatreds and find new life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the country of Samoa, people are looking to a new day after elections, and yet the old order is locking out the new elected leader. Lord, help new life to flow into this troubled nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for new life and new beginnings for all who have faced loss due to natural disaster. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that your people might receive the new wine of healing and hope. We especially remember Eileen, Dorothy, Doug, Brian, Mike, Calvin, Mick, Catherine, Jacob, Lynn, Margie, Tony, Carrie, Kurt, Karen, Andrea, Hayden, Kevin, Gladys, Cheryl, Jared, Ruth, the friends and family of Carol Osterman, and all the others we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, give us the new wine to drink and make us new wineskins to hold your spirit in the world. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, the bringer of new life. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. Receive God's love and strength so that your gifts will be multiplied and used in the building of God's reign of love. Go in God's peace and power to glorify God in all that you do. Amen. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the stories that Jesus imparts, filled with the Spirit who joins